Hello everyone and welcome back to the Bibliotheque. My name is Vervain and today I'm participating in the Blind Date with a Book experience. As you can see, I have this lovely brown paper package tied up in string behind me. This is from Elizabeth's Bookshop and I will link to them in the description section. But basically, Elizabeth's Bookshop likes to put into practice that saying of don't judge a book by its cover. So as you can see, they wrap up some books and they write down what that book is about on the uh, wrapping. And if you like the sound of it, you buy the book and um, yeah, it's kind of like a lucky dip. You see what you get. So here's the book that I purchased. I'm going to unwrap it for you here and now. And then I will be back shortly with my summary and opinions of that book. All right, let's find out a little bit about my mystery purchase. Greenwich, London Winter, River House Secrets, He Arrives, He Does Not Leave, and The Thames Flows. All right, let's see what's in here. All right, so this is Tideline by Penny Hancock. I have never heard of this book or this author before, so, um, yeah, I'll give it a go and um, I'll let you know what I think. And I am back. Now, as you can see, I have changed locations and that is because Tideline is set on the banks of the River Thames. And so I thought that I would use one of the summoning portals here at the Bibliotheque to translocate myself onto the banks of the River Thames. Now, unfortunately, I am not the most adept user of portal magic, and so as you can see, I have managed to translocate myself onto the banks of a river in some dimension somewhere in the multiverse, but unfortunately it's not the Thames. Um, however, I'm, I'm not going to try to rectify that because who knows where I might end up. So near enough is good enough. We are going to film on the banks of this unknown river. Okay, Tideline. So, first things first, first impressions. Um, I really enjoyed this book. It was, I think, really well written and really interesting. So I found myself wanting to read more. So I thought, you know, maybe I can, you know, read another chapter or when I didn't have much more to go, I thought, yeah, you know what, I think I could finish this book this evening. So I really liked the way that it was written. It was really interesting and really engaging. Now, as to what it's about, I have to give you a bit of a mini spoiler, I'm sorry, but I just don't know how else I could talk about it without giving you this little bit of detail. So Tideline is about a middle-aged woman called Sonia who abducts a 15-year-old boy called Jez and she then holds him hostage. So that is the premise of the book, so it is about the interactions between Sonia and Jez. It's then about his friends and family realizing that he's missing, them calling the police, and then how the family are coping and how the police go on about their investigation. Um, I should stress that it is not a uh, police-centered crime drama. It is more about um, the family and more about uh, Jez and Sonia's experience. So it's not, it's not a crime thriller. All right, so that's out of the way. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about that just because the kidnapping does form the basis of the book. So I don't want to, you know, give it all away for you, but I think I've said enough. So instead, I wanted to talk about two other topics that feature quite prominently in this book, and they are the location and interpersonal relationships. So location uh, is the house. It's the river house on the banks of the River Thames. And both the house and the River Thames feature quite prominently in this book, which is something interesting for me because normally uh, when I read a book, it's just set, you know, wherever. It's just, you know, background information that someone lives in this city or someone happened to walk down this street. Whereas with Tideline, the location is really important. It's mentioned a lot. And in particular, Sonia is very attached to the river house where she lives and to the river. So she regularly talks about um, knowing the locals, knowing the local markets, knowing the stalls that used to be at the markets. She talks about the sounds and the smells of the river. She talks about the tide coming in and out. So yeah, it was quite interesting to read a book where the location is really important to the story. 
Then moving on, the next thing that really struck a note with me were all of the bad relationships in this book. So when I say bad relationships, I don't just mean like romantic relationships. There are some of those as well, but any kind of interpersonal relationship, whether it be, um, you know, family, um, you know, your friends. I was really struck by how many of the characters are in bad relationships. So the really obvious one being that Sonia has kidnapped Jez. So obviously that's illegal and immoral and ethical. It's a predatory relationship. But beyond that, um, for example, there's a lot of, uh, I would say, like bullying to some extent because Sonia doesn't want to move and her family do and her family are, are pressuring her to leave the river house and her character repeatedly specifically says no I am not leaving this house and her family won't take no for an answer and they talk as if as if they haven't heard her and they say well you know the agents are coming to take a look in a few days time can you you know spruce the house up before they come and she has said no I'm not even considering it no I'm not moving this is her house, it's her house that she 100% owns, it was willed to her by her dad. So I think it's quite sort of disrespectful that her family are just like, well, you know what, we heard you say no, but we don't like that answer, so we're going to act as if we haven't heard you, and we're going to make preparations as if we're moving. And it's just like, you know what, when someone says no, it means no. It doesn't mean maybe, it doesn't mean ignore me and keep trying to convince me, it doesn't mean yes. When someone says no, it means no. And I really think it's a sign of a bad relationship that her family just act as if they haven't heard her and act as if her saying no doesn't mean anything. Beyond that, there's also a lot of bad marriages. There are a lot of couples where they got married for the wrong reasons and then they stayed for the wrong reasons. Um, there's also some jealousy and some control issues and beyond that there are also some friendships that have run their course. There are a couple of characters who talk about having to see someone out of obligation and they don't really like that person but you know, they have to be nice, they have to spend time with that person and I just think no, when you're an adult you can choose what relationships you want to be in and I think it's okay to prune your relationships. I think it's okay to say, you know what, I, I don't see eye to eye with this person, we've grown apart, we have you know, separate values, we don't have the same things in common and I don't want to pursue this relationship anymore, it doesn't bring me joy. And I think there are times when it's okay to say that. You don't have to maintain every relationship you've ever been in. You don't have to feel a sense of obligation to absolutely everyone. So there are definitely a few relationships in this book where I think this person could just say no, this person could just, you know, cut the cord and um, you just end that relationship and end that obligation. So those are the two other topics besides the main plotline that I wanted to talk about. But interestingly, the end of Tideline also includes a couple of reading group questions. <laughs> so um, I'm not quite sure how this is going to work as it is just you know, me talking to the camera. If you've read the book or if you're planning on reading the book, you can come back and maybe answer these questions in the comment section. But I picked out two of the more vague questions and I thought that I would discuss them here in the video so you can go ahead and keep watching even if you haven't read the book because I haven't picked the really specific questions to discuss. So don't worry, there aren't going to be spoilers. Alright, so let's start with the first question in the reading group guide and it's quite a long one. It is, an elegant woman with a family, beautiful home and respectable job. Sonia is an unusual, perhaps unthinkable captor. As Sonia tells us the story of Jez's capture from her point of view, how does her insight into the situation persuade us to think about her differently than if we had a third person narrator? So I did notice that and it's very clear that Sonia thinks that she's doing a good thing and she thinks that she's acting for a good reason. And usually when you read about a perpetrator, well at least for me in other crime fiction that I've read, usually it's in third person and it's very clear that this person is you're doing something wrong. Whereas when you see things from Sonia's point of view, it's clear that she thinks that she's doing a good thing, but to me that isn't 
any kind of an explanation. To me, that's not a mitigating factor. I don't feel any sympathy for her. I don't um, have any sort of understanding for her. She's doing the wrong thing. She's absolutely kidnapping someone, holding them against their will. And whenever anyone talks to her about the kidnapping, she pretends like she knows nothing about it. It's completely uncooperative. So I don't feel any sympathy for her. Even seeing it from her point of view, I don't in any way sympathize. I don't think there's any excuse for her behavior. But if you've read the book, if you disagree, please let me know in the comment section. All right, and finally, we're going to talk about question three, which is, the River Thames features throughout the book, both in present narrative and in Sonia's flashbacks. Almost a character in its own right. What do you think the river symbolizes? Okay, so firstly, I didn't think that the river symbolized anything. So yes, I did notice that the River House and the River Thames feature quite prominently in the book, but I thought that was just like for their own sake. I thought they, they were just important just inherently. I didn't think that they symbolized anything. However, given that the author has included this question in the reading group guide, that makes me suspect that maybe the river is symbolic of something. And so the really obvious thing would be perhaps that it symbolizes repressed memories and repressed emotions. Because Sonia does have some flashbacks throughout the book. And there is also talk about the, um, the river and the tide coming in and out and things washing up on shore. So I guess that could be a representation of thinking that you've um, left something in your past, thinking that you're done thinking about that or having an emotional reaction about it. And apparently, no, you're not, because there are times when Sonia does have flashbacks. So perhaps that is symbolized by the river washing something ashore, which people had thought they had lost to the river forever. Um, I suppose that also ties in with why Sonia is so attached to the house and to the river. It is her childhood home, so at first I thought, well, it's just you know her comfort zone. She just you know, really likes where she is. But perhaps she's tied to certain memories and certain events that have to do with her house and with the river and if you can't go back in time and have that moment again perhaps the next best thing is to remain in that same place so yeah perhaps the river is symbolic of repressed memories and emotions and maybe being close to the river is as close as she can get to recapturing some of those moments in time Again, if you think something else, please let me know in the comment section. And there we go. That was my very short review of Tideline by Penny Hancock. Um, yeah, let me know if you've read this book. Let me know if you like this genre of book. And hopefully I will see you next time.